Mike G says, my question is about at the money, out of the money, in the money covered calls. Which would you recommend for safer trading? In the money. Not a question. Which one do you like to trade the most? In the money covered calls if I'm trading them. However, I'm going to be dead honest with you, Mike. I have not traded a straight covered call in probably nine or 10 years, almost. Any position that I've opened with owning stock has been done as the married put position following our rules in the blueprint, which flips the covered call strategy on its side, as you can see. So covered call position, hey, we're going to buy stock. We're going to sell a call. We're going to generate, let's just say, 2 or 3% premium. So if I get assigned, I make 2 or 3% and my downside protection, how far the stock can fall before I'm losing money on the position is that 2 to 3% time premium that I collect. Or if I'm in the money, it's going to be slightly higher. The return might be 1% or 2%, but I might have a 6 or 7% downside protection in that case. Instead of that, I'm buying stock and I'm buying a put option, not for a short-term return of one week out, two weeks out, Mike, a month out in time. I'm buying a put that's 200, 210 days out, which controls my risk to only 5 or 6%. Instead of capping the upside gain and still taking on 96, 97%, 94% of the risk in the stock, I'm guaranteed to only lose 5, 6, or 7%. And I'm leaving the upside open. And by the way, I can still sell a call against this short term or do other positions to generate income to continue to lower that initial at risk and potentially have no risk on the trade. I actually have a bulletproof trade right now on MMYT, no risk in that case. All right. Or short term trades, if I just like a stock, it's been good in the news, it's been strong. I like the premiums that are available. I personally don't do a straight covered call, I'll do a standard caller. Buy the stock, sell an at or just out of the money call, usually just at the money mic for the highest time premium, and buy an out of the money put so I have a controlled risk of only 4 or 5% to the downside with maybe a max profit of 2 or 2.5% to the upside if I'm assigned. And I'm not looking to hold this stock long term. I'm looking to just make that return. All right, that being said, that basic comment being said, Mike, stop for a minute. And you can answer me if you want, but you don't have to. This is for your own personal gains. Why are you considering using the covered calls in your portfolio? Is it to consistently generate 1%, 2 or 3% per week, per month, something along those lines, more like maybe 0.7% per week um, to maybe 2 2 2.5% per month with a conservative in the money covered calls? Out of the money speculation will work if you're following the market sentiment tool. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of positions where you would have lost money with the at or out of the money covered calls from July 15th to August 5th. And then from August 5th to now, you would have made money, but you'd probably just be at break even. If you were doing in the money the entire time, you probably would have had at least a small profit over those two time periods. We went from the bearish shells to the bullish buys. It's a good test to do, actually. I'm going to do that. Covered calls July 1st through today. All right, fantastic. So, what are your trading goals, Mike? What are you looking to do? Are you looking for weekly? Are you looking for monthly? Are you looking for a specific return? And why I say that, let's take one of everyone's favorite stocks. Let's just take Apple, a little bit expensive. We could use Meta as well, but I'm just going to take Apple. We're up to 226.84 right now. And I'm on the call chain. Why am I on the call chain of all things? Because on the power options call chain, let's go, let's just say 14 days out in time, Mike. What we show you on the power options call chain, you can adjust the columns any way you want, but as a default, you're going to see what's called the downside protection if you enter these positions as a covered call. Downside protection is what? It's how far the stock can drop before you're technically losing money on the position. Percent if unchanged, hey, if the stock stays at the same price. But more importantly, the comparison of downside protection versus percent if assigned. Stock at 226.84. In the money 220 strike, midpoint of 803. We have a 3.5% downside protection, but only a 0.5% return for 14 days if we're assigned. What else do we have? 
a 76% probability that the stock will remain above 220 will be assigned and make that 0.5% return. Um, that's not terrible, but it's not great. What's the trade-off? At the money. At the money usually offers, and in this case, it's debatable. It's not really debatable. I'm just looking at it right here. Okay. Yeah, the, the I'm sorry, the 227.50 is more at the money with the stock at close to 227. I apologize. But what's the trade-off here? 225 still in the money by $1.84, but we're getting 473 at midpoint. Mike, what does that give us? We still have a 2% downside protection. The stock can fall 2% for the next 14 days before we're losing money on the position with a 1.3% return if assigned, 57.5% probability of getting assigned and earning that return of 1.3%. That would probably be closer to my target for a two-week out trade. The implied volatility here is relatively low, 18%, uh, 19% for Apple because it's Apple. Trade-off, speculative. What could happen at the 230 strike? Hey, I still get $2.22. I'm getting a 1% downside protection for the next 14 days. Right? I'm collecting 222 against the stock trading at 226. We're about 1%. If I'm assigned, I make 2.4%. What does that mean, Mike? If the stock's trading above 230, I don't roll the call. I let it be assigned because I'm not looking to hold this position long term. I'm just targeting a return for 7 to 14 days, whatever matches my criteria, which we could set the power option search based on your goals. No problem. But this gives us the comparison. It's almost a direct flip, isn't it? Do you want 3.5% downside protection? What would you recommend for safer trading? What's the definition of safer trading? Higher protection to the downside, giving up some return with a better probability of earning that return. Your question in itself defines an in the money covered call versus an out of the money covered call, which has lower downside protection, how far the stock can drop before you're losing money on the position, higher potential return, but a lower probability of the stock reaching that price and earning that return. Are you married to these stocks that you want to trade as a covered call long term, Mike? Or are you just looking to get steady income and you're just looking to get assigned and move on? I think that's what you're looking for, Mike. You, and then you comment, I'd like to sell short term call on stock for steady income. That's fine. But what my question is, are you targeting stocks that you want to hold in your portfolio and just generate 1% previous? By the way, the downside protection is essentially the time value. So you're talking about just having a 1% or 0.6% return every 7 to 14 days and have that call expire worthless and just hoping that the stock doesn't fall to keep selling calls against it and generating 0.5, 0.6%. Or are you looking for something that, hey, I want to be assigned, meaning I'm going to use power options. I'm going to go into the search. I'm going to use Ernie's default tested search, the weekly picks of the day. And here I have positions for seven days out in time, or you could use the monthly as well, that are offering me a good downside protection of five, six, or seven percent while still making one or two percent for the next seven days. Of course, Monday it'll be a bit lower with time premium in there. And we're looking at 70, 65, 75 percent probabilities. These are all in the money. Merit 1869 with the August 30th, 17 and a half strike for 151, eight percent downside protection. 1.9% return of assigned on the positions. Mike, that's something to consider there. That That's an approach that we use. This is Ernie's weekly picks of the day. Short-term selections, one week out. Um, no earnings announcements coming up. Options are 1% in the money for expectation. Expect to be called each week with the position liquidated. And you'd look to put a stop on it if the stock drops 10% in price to get out of the position to limit losses as we showed earlier. The importance of that on credit spreads um, with the trade simulator tool at Radioactive Trading. And Mike, you'd also say, I'd like to sell short-term call and stock for steady income. Maybe I should consider short-term bull put credit spreads. I'd say you should consider both. Okay, one thing we didn't talk about here is when I was talking about the married puts and my approach, what I use, this is my allocation that has met my goals. And it might not meet your goals. Okay, I'm not using this as a recommendation. I am not a financial advisor by any stretch of the imagination. So what I'm saying, Mike, is before 2008, when we partnered up with Kurt Frankenberg at Radioactive Trading, 
Um, I had traded many covered calls. I, I started working with Ernie, by the way, about 2002, 2003. So the first five or six years, I started doing covered calls. And we were working with some uh, two different groups out in Texas, compound stock earnings and financial success coaching. And they each had different approaches to doing it. But I'd get calls from each of them saying, hey, my cover, my stock dropped 25 percent. I'm in a place where I'm in winter and they tell me not to sell a call below the stock price because I could get locked into a loss if the stock rebounds and I get a sign. Uh, they're telling me to wait. Don't worry if the stock falls. Well, no, if I'm only generating one or two percent per month on covered call premium and my stock falls 20 percent, I've been in the position for four months. I'm down 16 percent. I need eight to 16 months to get back to break even with the strategy that I'm doing. That's when I personally moved into long collars. Then we talked about a little standard collar positions with the extra put, giving up return to the upside, but having that put. And then we met Kurt about the married put positions. And when we started partnering up with Kurt, he looked back, he and I looked back at my last six to eight months of collar trading. And we saw that I would have made more leaving the upside open and only generating income at certain times following the rules in the blueprint, as opposed to doing the standard collar approach. In any case, Mike, let me let me put it this way. 50% at any given time, 45 to 55%, but let's just call it 50% is in married put positions. Of course, they're capital intensive. We're talking about in the money covered calls, which are also considered a protective income strategy, just like out of the money naked puts, but they're capital intensive. It's going to represent a larger portion of your portfolio, 40, 50, 55, maybe 60%. I think Ernie is at 80% of his portfolio is in the protected married put positions, and he speculates with only 5 to 7% uh, into other strategies. At any given time, I'm sorry, so 50% married puts, 15% is in bold put credit spreads. Why? Exactly what we saw in that previous discussion for Rick, where even with Keeping my losses to 50% and 85% success rate, we saw drawdowns of 35 or 40%. That happens in black swan events. Okay, So that's limited, but at the same time. So that's bull put credit spreads. Okay, and it shifts. With the market sentiment tool, I might change this to bear calls. Okay, So bullish spreads or bear call credit spreads. That's 15%. I know it looks like LS now, but that's 15%. 10%. Of my portfolio, I like to use what you might refer to as poor man's covered call, but I hate that term because I think it's misleading to new investors. Diagonal calendar spreads, buying a leap option or an option that's eight months to a year out in time, buying a call option and then selling near term calls against it. Is that a parity trade to the married put? Not really at all. Why am I doing it then if I have this matching the returns that I want for the larger portion of my portfolio, this expanding the returns that I want because it is a speculative leverage trade? Why am I doing the calendar calls on 10% of my portfolio? Because honestly, my portfolio size, Mike, there are stocks in the $500, $600, $800 range that I would like to trade as a married put, but I can't. <laughs> I could, but it would take up too much of my portfolio. So I'm trading those as the poor man's covered call. I'm buying an in the money call, let's say 800 stock, I'm buying a 770, 760 call, five, six, eight months out, and I'm selling near term 810, 820 calls against it, kind of like a debit spread, but calendar. So where I'm going, and then there's you know another 5% that's in the broad-based protection. Like I mentioned, VIX calls, when I see the VIX drop down below 13 and the market sentiment flashes that bearish sell, or I might buy puts on SPY, and yeah, uh, okay, two to three percent. I might call lottery tickets, right? So I'm going to look for some positions, maybe buy a call around earnings, something that came up in the news, but it's a very small portion of the portfolio. So here we're at about 83, 84 percent, and then the rest of it, of course, is in cash for management. And if I have to roll anything on these positions, this is already covered by the leverage, it should be, but here on the diagonals, if I want to move it. And occasionally I might do a straddle or strangle on SPWX or NDX or IWM. All right. This is me. I'm not a financial advisor. Again, it matches my criteria, matches my goals. It probably doesn't match your goals because everyone has different goals. That's fine. But you said, I'd like to sell short-term covered calls for stock on steady income. It's considered a conservative income strategies going with the in the money, as we mentioned, Mike. You said, maybe I should consider short-term bull put credit spreads. Nothing wrong with that either, in my opinion. But the covered calls are going to be the larger portion of your portfolio. The bull put credit spreads have to be the smaller percentage. Why? Let's say, well, you know why. I, I just always have to illustrate it. 
let's say I did open this marathon covered call, 17.5%, stocks at 18.69. The stock drops 10%, $1.80. We go down to 16.49. Well, my break even is 17.18, right? Roughly 16.49, let's just call it that, $1.80. Um, I, I did that math wrong. I'm sorry. It drops down to 1680. My apologies, 1680. My break even is 1718 because of this dollar fifty one premium I got. I'm only down 38 cents. If I sold the 17 and a half strike put and bought the 17, the stock fell 10% to 1680. I'm at 100% loss of what I put up into that bull put credit spread. That's the lie of leverage. The return on the marathon bull put credit spread at 17 and a half to 17 might be 10, 12, 15% for the same seven days out in time with the same 71% probability of expiring worthless. News comes out, black swan event, stock falls 10%. I'm only losing 30 cents or $30 per 100 shares of my Mara covered call with the 17 and a half strike in the money. I'm down 100% of whatever I invested in that bull put credit spread at that time. That's the lie of leverage, and it also illustrates the importance of why I have to keep my losses to 50% with my trading structure in the bull put uh, two-week out credit spreads as well. Okay, so <laughs> I, I wanted to, to, to bring that up, but because it's capital intensive, uh, there's nothing wrong with doing both. Okay, I, I'm not saying anything against doing both, but the bull puts have to be a smaller portion. We really only recommend that 10 to 15% of your portfolio be in those leveraged spreads that can lose 100% of what you invested in the position because they're capital intensive. In the money covered calls, which I illustrated, in my opinion, is the safer approach because the better downside protection, the better probability of getting a sign and just earning that return on a consistent basis, not being married to the stock long term, just looking for return in that situation, Mike. That was the approach that I would recommend, but it's capital intensive. So you're going to have to have that at 50, 55, 60% of your total portfolio because you have to buy the stock as the underlying. Yes, the leverage gives you leverage, but you can also fall into lie of leverage with credit spreads and debit spreads because of the lower costs in those situations. You still have a good probability, but in an unexpected event you can still lose 100%. And that's why those triggers are important. Uh, and that what, what I talked about there earlier um, for Rick, the video that we had there on YouTube, eight ways to manage um, a credit spread. If you start looking at bull put credit spreads, you start looking at that allocation is important in your portfolio, but also the management techniques of what to look for, when to look to close a position, uh, when to look to manage those positions as well. Okay. A lot to think about. I appreciate it, says Mike. You're welcome, Mike. That's what we're here for. So hopefully you got some good information there. You know, if you were talk, if you scheduled a coaching session and talked with Ernie, he'd be pointing you to the weekly or to the in the money covered calls. That's the safest approach. Your definition was something safer while still getting steady income. That's the definition of using an in the money covered call. Oops, and I just removed the chain I wanted to show. Uh, using the in the money covered calls with a higher downside protection, lower return, of course, but higher probability of getting that return as well.